Okay guys, I've messed around with the MSI 16-F2 bare bones laptop. I've tested games, uh, I've done video editing, all these sorts of tests. Um, and for a week now, I've had it, used it, done modifications. I'm going to tell you what I did, um, give you links to how you can do it, and give you my opinions on this laptop. So continue watching to see what I think about it. Sorry about this video being so long. I didn't mean for it to be so long, but uh, it just happened that way. I wanted to make like my projector review. I wanted a really in-depth review of this laptop. I didn't want to leave anything out, which I know I left stuff out now. Which, if you're going to ask questions, please ask questions in the comments. If you look down in the description, you'll see the specs of the laptop, um, what I upgraded, and questions people have asked I'll put it down there so you don't have to ask them and you will get your answer right away so please look in the description for that stuff links will be down there as well for different things and enjoy the rest of the video because I really even though it's so long I give a lot of information in this video and I really hope it will be I don't know interesting per se maybe use, useful information if you're going to get this laptop but uh, thanks for watching guys and enjoy the video Okay, to give you some back history before I do anything, I got this from Exotic PC. Let's see, uh, I don't remember the exact date. I just ordered everything and all that stuff. Um, but what I do know is I ordered it on um, Friday because I would suggest you not to order two credit cards because with their service they have to verify addresses if you ship to a different address than your billing address. And then you gotta have issues because my order didn't actually get processed until Monday afternoon. So that was what, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, four days extra I had to wait to get this thing delivered. So that was my fault. But it still took them nine days. It says six to ten days process time for building their computers or laptops per se. And uh, I feel on my part for a review of their company. I, even though they're a smaller company, not like Dell or HP or anything, but I still feel feel like six to ten days is too long. I don't know what exactly what process they do, how many laptops they get, so I can't comment on that. But I feel like they should be able to get this laptop built, considering I will tell you later the minimal amount of upgrades I um, asked to be put in. But in two to five days, I think max should be how long it should take to um, put this in. And you have to remember now that I'm talking in business days, so that doesn't even count the weekend, two weekends I had to wait for this to get built. But besides the fact is, it took one day less, three weeks for this, from the first day I ordered it to get it. So, expect if you do the with one credit card, it pays cash, it could take you longer because you had to verify cash, but they have a cash discount. That stuff, you can see that on their site. But, um, expect two weeks, probably minimum to get from the day you place your order until it, you receive it at your house. So I expect about two weeks. Um, I think that's all I have to say about their service. Next to I'm going to make one later note when I talk about my upgrades. Um, just to go around the laptop, it feels pretty dang, dang sturdy. I used to have a 17 inch gateway laptop and this is a 15.6 inch so it's smaller, easier to make, um, to be able to be steady. But it's a it's um, solid. This is plastic, obviously you're not gonna have metal like a MacBook. I haven't increased the price uh, immensely. But it looks like a brush metal finish. It's plastic, you know, plastic, plastic. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, everything's plastic. Typical laptop. Uh, but it's sturdy plastic. Seems more of a solid piece on top. I don't know. But it, it feels sturdy. That's I uh, like about that. It's not like it doesn't feel like it's gonna break. And it's actually lighter. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I guess a good thing since I have to carry this to class multiple times a week. Um, but it's um, if um, it's not terribly heavy. I guess what's it's five and a half pounds or so without battery and without the charger. But I guess with the battery, what six and a half, seven pounds, seven pounds ish, and enough to like nine, I think, with the charger. But and that's a more acceptable weight for the kind of powerhouse of a laptop. This is. Um, if you look on this side of the laptop, let me focus here, go manual focus, because you don't get that there. And you got 
a huge vent. This is actually your CPU vent right here. And you got bottom vent right here, which is good. So even if you happen to block this, you still get airflow out of that. You got two USB 3 ports. I really like that. Actually, the hard drive you see back there is a USB 3 hard drive. I don't currently have USB 3 ports on any of my desktops, so uh, that's nice. I actually haven't tried it yet. I'm assuming it's going to be fast. SD card slot, I've tried that. That's fast. And a USB 2 port. That's typical. Um, right there. If I turn around here, this side I got my mini dongle plugged in for my mouse. I got uh, the audio ports I haven't actually used, but because I use a USB headset, but I actually have used this for just quick listening in the morning. But anyways, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do 5.1 out. I haven't personally tested that um, with my 5.1 system. But yeah, microphone, headphone, two extra ports. I'm shooting this port, this port, and this port. Gives you 5.1 surround sound. And my upgraded Blu-ray drive here. I I did a 4x speed instead of the 6x speed because it was cheaper and I feel like I have a burner in my desktop and I don't need anything more than that in a laptop just to be able to read the disc. That's all I want. And yeah, the USB 2 port right here with my mouse dongle in it. If you go here to the back, got it plugged in. Here, I'm going to focus. Here, got a Kensington lock over here. You got a, the fake grill that makes it look even and symmetric on the back. Um, we got your gigabit Ethernet port. Um, very fast. I got, I don't know, uh, my school varies in internet speed so I can get up to 100 megabits of internet so 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 that gets the full speed 100 megabits so you're fine with that port um you got VGA I forgot eSATA and an HDMI port which I'm 99% sure HDMI 1.4 can output 3D to 3D TV and this is because of GTX 570M can play 3D if you have a compatible monitor in my case is my projector, which is also my desktop can play, which is behind this if you see it, can play 3D games. And you have this huge port right here, this vent, also the bottom port in case you kind of block it, which you should not block the ports. Um, that's very bad overheated your computer, especially for this specific laptop, I'll get into that detail later. Um, you got a huge port for your GPU, which is very good. And you got instead of the, uh, I forgot the models, G63DXR, Sutton 68DXR, something like that. This line right here, the silver lines on the side over here and here would have lights, and this would be a lit, lit up MSI logo. I might eventually custom make Sutton to stick in here. Don't know. The back, good style, and has the creases, it's not flat. Kind of would have liked it flat because I have a coupon or something to get like a skin. But I can't really get a skin because it's not flat. But you know, it's no big deal. So you get around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna insert pictures here. I'm gonna, ask, um, I'm gonna turn this over. Make sure I'm looking at the right spot here. And show you what you get on here. I'm not actually gonna take out the battery, but if you see here and you saw my unboxing, turn down the camera a little bit. You see the battery port right here. Hopefully it's not out of focus because I can't tell too much on my smaller camera screen. But sorry if it is out of focus, guys. Um, got your battery here. I'm going to actually show you um, pictures and I guess I'll not uh, full screen but kind of in the crop. You'll see it now. Um, but here is a hard drive. You can't see in this bit. is my main boot drive you with this is OS1 you want the your boot drive right here I don't know if it shouldn't matter but I seem like I had an issue so I had to end up switching it. it's a pain to get this cover off so you want to not take the cover off as much as possible uh, I actually need to give you what I ordered I actually didn't order a hard drive with this because I had two hard drives ready to use so I did not need a hard drive for this I upgraded the blu-ray like I said and I upgraded the CPU to a 2670QM from the Core i5 they had now I have a Core i7 which is supposed to be according to the benchmarks a little bit faster than my desktop over here which is pretty impressive well for video encoding that is maybe for games it might be a little bit slower but give or take a few frames per second but that's really nice that this is like comparable in performance to my desktop here I've had for years 
but get over here and see the first one down above the OS hard drive I'll call it as your CPU right um, below the fan which is here and um, then over here is my data drive and stuff right here you will see is a sub which I stated in the unboxing and here is the GPU vent as well but the GPU heats things all right in here you will see in the picture I have to decide um, because it's, I didn't feel like taking it off against the pain in the ass. The thing I have that you guys might have the same issue, and that's what I was saying before about exotic. I, for as long as they took to build this nine day, nine business days, they did a horrible, horrible, horrible job of putting on thermal paste on the GPU. Not as bad, still pretty bad, and CPU was a horrible job of putting on thermal paste. I upgraded to CPU and got IC Diamond included. So, um, I was supposed to, IC Diamond is supposed to be one of the best thermal paste out there. I had a tube of Arctic Silver 5 laying around. You have to be careful with that because it is conductive and if you get it on one of the pins of your laptop, it could just, um, ruin it, pretty much. So I was really careful to spread it out and not get it on anything when I did this. So I did that, I had to, the temperatures were ridiculous, uh, the horror, I don't know. It, that really pissed me off that I shouldn't have even had to have done that. But keep in mind, if you upgrade your CPU to a Core i7, it might run really freaking hot and you might have to replace the thermal paste yourself because I got a degree of warranty with this and I was waited three weeks to get it and I'm not sending it back, get it there in a week and take a week to get it back. I'm not waiting two more weeks to have my laptop work. So I did it myself because I can do that and it's not very hard. I'm sure there are guides. I should have did one, but I, I was didn't feel like I'm um, making a video sorry about that but got your CPU GPU the both replaceable uh, I don't not sure if I'm gonna do that probably will sell it two or three years after this should last that long and I think that's all I have to say you got your two ports of the RAM here and on the keyboard which I haven't taken off yet um, well it's two other ports stuff so that I think what 32 gigs 64 gigs I don't know how many gigs of RAM but you have four dim slots for RAM which is great and like I said, the fan, two separate heat sinks, huge. Uh, I think that's all I have to say here about the thermal paste. I'd replace, I'd replace it for GPU. And um, tell you about the temperatures. I was getting like 90. I got up to 94 degrees Celsius for CPU, which is horrible. 100 is the like max limit before you like shut down. Like it throttles the CPU and like till you like hey, that's not good. It's not good to get to 100. <laughs> Uh, it can damage your CPU permanently. So after the thermal paste, after it breaking in for the week, and it still hasn't fully broken in, I think I get a max of gosh like 80 now. So it's dropped like say 15 degrees Celsius. Got a max of 80 like I was playing a game for like BF3 or you know, Skyrim for like an hour, and I only got like 78, 79 of a max. So it's dropped like 15 degrees Celsius, which I still think 79 is high, but apparently for the new Core i7s, that's the normal temperature. So I guess I'm going to assume it's going to last, but at 94, it would not have lasted more than a couple years. Yeah, using it every single day, it would would have been very bad. Um, so that's my major complaints there. Um, um, for overall laptop, um, overall experience, 6 or 7 out of 10 because of how long had it wait, how many place the thermal paste, if you didn't know how to do that, and other overheating issues, um, it's probably 6 or 7 out of 10. But if I didn't have the overheating issues, it took maybe 2 weeks to get it, probably 8 or 9 out of 10. It's a very good laptop. So I'll have more stuff to tell you, so don't keep on watching. I mean, <laughs> continue watching. Um, here, with, I think practically these buttons are useless. This button's more so... Um, this one's more useless than this one. This, you turn it on, turns off your Windows key. See, I'm pressing the Windows key. Does not work. Press this, it works. Um, but that's that right there. Um, so when you're gaming, you don't actually press the Windows key, minimize out. Because in Left 4 Dead, you hit that, your game freezes, you can't unminimize it, and you're screwed. So that's really annoying. So that's nice. Um, they don't actually have these two buttons over here, don't actually work. That's stupid. Um, I really wish you could program these, but I guess not in this. Turns on and off your webcam. Pretty stupid if, if you ask me, because there's a function key here. 
you have connected the different monitor, turn off your trackpad. Sorry about that, my um, memory card filled up. But what I was saying is, function, you can disable the trackpad right here, which is nice for gamers as well, because then you, if you have a bigger hands than me, your palm can rub over and move your mouse and screw you up. So it's nice you can function F3, disables trackpad, function F4, well, uh, it's a programmable button, so you can do function F4, and it brings up whatever program you want. I have it now to some bring up. Yeah, it's glitched right now, but the guy has a fix for it, so I haven't applied that fix yet. And I'll tell you, it's to increase my fan speed, which you can't do otherwise. But I'll make a separate video for that eventually. But I have it set to do that to launch that program. There's a function F5 is the eco mode. I haven't really tried it. Forgot to on battery. And uh, before I forget battery life, you can get up to probably if you have one. SSD, uh, one hard drive, um, just one hard drive period, um, maybe a little bit slower CPU and such, uh, you can get up to four hours. I got three and a half, just over three and a half hours of battery life. With two hard drives, the faster CPU and, um, on battery, which is very, very good for this type of laptop, so just so you know. And then you have a function F6 for your webcam, F8 is wireless, F9, Bluetooth, F10. If you have a cell phone receiver, it's not capable with this laptop. I'm not sh maybe it is. Um, it should be because it has the function, but I do not have a cell phone receiver in this. And ZZ, not even having a clue what that means. Ziz, maybe sleep. I don't know. <laughs> I've never actually tried it. Um, yeah, home and in. And your audio keys down here and bright screen brightness. Screen bright. Screen. Let's get to screen. Screen. Very probably one of the best laptop screens I've ever seen. And this is just a stock one, matte. I preferred matte over glossy because it's not reflective. You don't even see reflection on this. Very nice. I r really like that. My desktop's like that, and I enjoy that. Might not have as good a color, but I go in the NVIDIA's control panel and adjust the color and contrast myself, and it looks pretty darn close to my desktop screen, which is one of the best monitors I've ever seen still, and it's five years old now. <laughs> um, that was like three hundred and something dollars when we got it that long time ago very well worth buying a good screen and having it last you like five years versus having a crappy screen and living with it for three years being crappy so yeah um coming up here you got your microphone can't bring up my camera can't see it my microphone i don't know if that's stereo or not because that's two holes right there may be a noise canceling aspect of it um I don't know how well noise cancels. I talked to my friend with people playing music on Skype behind me. Um, said it wasn't terribly loud, but I'm, he could hear it. So it's not like any supposed to be that way with these type of microphones. Webcam, nothing special. It's supposed to be 720p. I tried that. It looked okay. You have to be in like natural light, like I'm in now, for it to be smooth. It gets probably like 10 FPS. Otherwise, it's not smooth. It's it's. It's susceptible if you don't have a webcam. I'm used to an HD Logitech webcam, considerably better than this. So that's for built-in webcam. It's typical. It's nothing special. Um, what else can I do? The screen. I want to mention again. It's 1080p in a 15.6 inch package, higher res than my 20 inch um, Dell monitor over there. But um, it's you can't look. You try and get down here and look. Like I'm doing the pixel test, pixel density. It's, I wouldn't say calling the retina display by any means, but you really have to try to see a pixel on this screen. I haven't found the dead pixel yet. I'm very happy about that. Didn't even try to do the 30 day because I knew how dense the pixels are going to be. I was actually surprised even more so because the text is really dang small. Um, the, how dense the pixels are. So even if there was a dead pixel, I probably could not see it unless there was like a bright red on white or black or <laughs> something like that I, I I'm not found a dead pixel yet after a week um, I'm trying to think of anything else about this um, game performance I'm not gonna do in this video because it's already super long I'm gonna tell you though Skyrim I've played a little bit of Skyrim not a, I mean I'm not a big RPG fan but I played it just to try and I, I mean I kind of like it but uh, I'll play it off and on um, otherwise Skyrim this is card is equivalent to a once overclocked is equivalent to a GTX 460 and a desktop 
a 768 megabyte version of a GTX 416 desktop. So if you look up benchmarks for that, you would get a rough estimation of what this laptop is capable of. I think stock is kind of like a 450 um, GTS, so I'm not sure what they call the numbers at the end. It's like a, um, um, NVIDIA 450, I think is what this is, desktop equivalent stock. But this is a 570M GTX and a laptop. With the media Core i7, if you want games or video editing, you want a Core i7. Well, Core i5 is good for games, but if you're going to do any media processing, photo editing, game, um, video editing, you want a Core i7. I just got my un upgraded to the 2670 QM because I figured if I'm going to keep it for three years, I want the 10% extra speed for like, was it like $50 more. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, let's go back to Skyrim. It could it maxes it. 1080p um, Skyrim Max, I consider a playable frame rate. For an RPG, for um, FPS, no. Because they get it ranges between like upper 20s to 60 in different areas. I think it might be the game just being not too optimized yet. I have the latest driver from January from NVIDIA on this, so it's not, I don't know if it's driver issues or what. They probably still have stuff they can do, but it seems like there are drops here and there. It could be CPU, it could be graphics. I lowered a couple settings, AA is off, you really don't even need AA on the screen. So everything's max and it looks great. I'm great. I got BF3 with this laptop which disappointed me again with it's on it because it didn't actually ship with it. I had a contact support to get my copy of BF3 uh, It's a code you download from Origin. So it's not a physical thing, it's a download option. You, I, you got to choose from BF3 or the new Batman Arkham City game, I chose BF3 because that's what I wanted. Um, but I played a little bit of that, plays at max settings as well, no AA, and between, uh, usually stays above 30 FPS, around 40, um, usually, around 40 FPS. Very good for max settings on a laptop. I, I'm very impressed at the game performance. This is actually faster than my desktop was before Christmas because I got a new graphics card, not for Christmas, but I, it was on sale for my desktop, which is a 560 Ti, so it's like probably... 15, 20% faster than this laptop for graphics. So, um, that's that. Um, so, a couple games I told you. Um, look forward to more benchmarks. If you've watched this far, thank you very much for uh, watching my video and all that such. If you want to see game benchmarks, ask me questions. I'm drawing a blank what else I could tell you on this. Um, there's not much, I don't think more I could. It's probably something big I missed, but I'll get it in the description. If somebody comments that I missed it, so down there. But if you want more game benchmarks, I will make videos on those, just short clips. Skyrim, BF3, and stuff like that. And, yeah, the thing, one thing I forgot was the fan speed. Like, I showed you that program. That's a hack. I hacked, uh, flashed a BIOS to an unlocked BIOS to give me extra controls, which I haven't actually used because I thought it was going to give me controls to change the fans never actually happened so there's controls to increase performance and stuff by flashing your bios i'll see if i can make a video on that make a video on how to increase your fan speed and thermal paste uh, you're gonna have to do yourself i would recommend something not conductive for a laptop um versus arctic silver 5 but i don't feel like buying anything or waiting for shipping time to get what i need so I use Arctic Silver 5 and it works perfect for me. Um, idle temps, um, you, uh, let's see, I got hardware monitor open here. Idle temps, you're right here, just sitting here, you're in the upper 40s. It's really, you have to not be using it to stay in the mid upper 40s. Um, otherwise, if you're using it, it stays upper 40s minimum and then like low 50s, which I think is stupid because other people are getting in the upper 30s. I have completely idle like it is now. It's about 5 degrees cooler Celsius, and that confuses me how they get that. I, I think it might be my CPU is faster, and so that's why. And it, I don't know. That's why GPU is fine. See, it's 39 degrees right here at perfect light. It'll say it's in mid 40s when you're just using the laptop, and that's fine. If you're interested, let's go to the Windows Experience Index. Sorry for making such a long review, but like my projector review, I wanted in depth. So I really hate people asking me questions that I forgot the answer, so I made it in depth. So if you watch the whole video, your question probably is answered. 
Um, so thank you for watching the whole video because you heard that. Uh, and 7.5, that's my desktop's 3.6 gigahertz quad core. It's actually 7.4 for both of those. That's funny. So this is actually supposed to be supposed to be faster than my 3.6 gigahertz uh, core 2 quad desktop. Right there behind uh, the blue right here. Um, and gaming graphics, I have a 7.8 or something. I don't know what it was on my desktop now. And a primary disk of 5.9 because I don't have an SSD in this yet. I have a hybrid drive and it boots up in 30 seconds it gets to desktop and by a minute you can web browse and stuff normally. Very fast boot time with that. And I don't know if there's anything else I can say. Um, like I said, probably I'm going to just not do it overall 6 or 7 out of 10 because I had to do stuff myself to get it how it should have been in the first place. Uh, but after that, I'm going to just not even count the service in my review as laptop and whole, probably 9 out of 10. The definite reason I don't like it is um, these buttons should be actually buttons. And um, the uh, the overheating issues, it, for some reason I feel like it, they could still put a little bit better cooling in here, even though it has really good cooling anyway. And one thing I know is the major thing I forgot, the Dyn Audio speakers. Best speakers I've ever heard on a laptop. Had that's with the sub down below. I forgot to mention that early, and that's the, probably the big thing I missed. So hopefully you, know, you still watched the whole video. Best speakers of any laptop. That sounds like a cheap 2.1 set. So buy a $20 2.1 set from the store, $15 I don't know, something. And that's close to what this sounds like. Maybe not as much bass in terms of clarity and everything else. It, they sound really good. And it might not say Dyn Audio Speakers on their site because it's the bare bones kit. It is Dyn Audio Speakers because they sound very good. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Thanks for keeping through with me in the video. And if you have any questions, again, comment below. Well, so it happened again. My card ran out <laughs> for the third time, I think, in this video recording. But sorry for the long video again. So you know how long it is. Um... <laughs> But thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Um, please comment below. Subscribe. Also, if you want to see like, game performance on this, those would be up. If you tell me what you want, those should be up in the next week. And if you're still watching, <laughs> I will have a how to build your own PC desktop in case you don't have the money to buy a laptop for very close to this performance for probably like say six hundred, five, six hundred dollars, so less than half the price of this. You get this kind of performance. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.